Hi everyone, in this video, we will introduce how to use AWS as a cloud computing resource. First off, obviously, to use AWS, you need to register for AWS account. Um, I trust you all know how to do that, so we'll just skip that part. Once you've registered for the account, uh, you'll arrive at this homepage of AWS. And one thing to keep in mind is the region you're in. Uh, I'm using US East Ohio, but you can also use uh, US East North Virginia, just don't make this location too far from your actual geographic location, no matter if it's in Pittsburgh or Silicon Valley, because um, it's going to um, matter the latency that you have to connect to your instance. Okay, so once you've selected your region, um, the first thing you want to do is to raise your service quotas. You can just search for service quotas here. Okay. So this is essentially um, the limit that you have for various AWS services. And um, what we want is to raise our uh, service quotas for on-demand P and G instances. Okay. Uh, so if you search for on-demand, um, some stuff will pop out here. And what we want is to uh, raise the uh, service quotas for on-demand G and VG instances and on-demand P instances, because these instances comes with the GPU, which is required for our um, deep learning tasks. And um, you may notice that there are also uh, spot instances. Now, the difference between spot instances and on-demand instances is that basically on-demand instances, they solely belong to you. And spot instances are sort of um, share resource between multiple accounts. So if you want like an instance dedicated for your task, it's best to use on-demand instances. Okay. So once you filed your request to raise your service quotas, it typically takes the AWS staff uh, maybe a week to process the request. And you can like chat with them and tell you like you are a uh, student in CMU taking a deep learning course that you need to use AWS for the course and stuff. Um, it won't typically take too long for them to respond and pass your uh, requests. Okay, so once you raise your service quotas, you can return to your homepage and you want to launch uh, your own instances. So here we want to use EC2. And this is the uh, EC2 console. Um, the next thing we want to do is to launch an instance. So if we click there, uh, there are a lot of options here that we need to uh, take a look at. Okay, so the first thing is the application OS images. Uh, this is basically some pre-built setting for your instance. So it you don't need to like start from scratch. Uh, for demonstration purposes here, I will choose Ubuntu. And um, if you click here, you will see the various images. And um, what we want is to use uh, a image with PyTorch. So here you can see that this image comes with PyTorch 2.3, which is what we want. Okay, that doesn't really matter. Okay, and now uh, we want to choose a correct instance type. Now, this default type is not good for deep learning. It, has like little uh, CPU and it doesn't really come with the GPU, hence why it's so cheap. Uh, what we want is basically to use uh, an instance with a GPU. Here, uh, I will use this G5.x large instance, which comes with a uh, GPU. And you can see it's basically uh, a lot more expensive than um, the default one, which is T2.micro or something. Okay. Um, Next, we want to create a key pair to access our machine. Um, what we want is to create a new key pair and uh, let's just type 11785, okay? Click create key pair. Okay, now this key pair will be downloaded uh, to your local computer. So let's, let's um, take a look at that later. Um, down below, you have your network settings. Uh, you can also click these two, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, also, you can change these settings after uh, you've launched your instance. Um, for storage, uh, since we are only demonstrating now, 45 gigabytes is typically enough. 
you may want to increase this value uh, since if you want to like load larger models or something, but that's solely dependent uh, on you. Okay, so once we click launch instance, uh, wait a few minutes. Okay, so see here, we've successfully initiated our instance. If we just click here, you will see that uh, the instance is initializing. Okay, so now how do we connect to this instance? Well, if you go into this instance, you will find that there is this connect button and we want to connect using uh, our SSH client. Okay, so it really gives you all the uh, commands that you need, but if we take a look, this, this key file is default in our download folder and that is generally not good practice. So uh, if we go to no, downloads, uh, this is our uh, local Mac terminal. If you have Windows, uh, I believe it's generally the same. Uh, we want to move this 11785.pem, uh, which was created by AWS into .ssh, which is the default folder for all the uh, SSH keys. Okay, and if we go to um, dot ssh, we can see that the the key file is now here. Now we can't directly use this key file because it's downloaded from the web. So the next thing we want to do is to modify its uh, file permissions. Uh, we just do chmod four hundred. You can also do chmod seven hundred or something. Um, but generally you want to change the permissions. Uh, as prompted by um, the uh, AWS web page. And once we've done that, we can just connect to the instance using this command. We just basically copy paste it from here. All right. Yes. Okay. And now we are in our AWS instance. If we take a look, we're definitely not on our own machine and let's check if it does come with a GPU. And yes, we have a basically a 24 gigabyte um, A10G GPU, but depends on what instance you choose. Uh, it might be like some, I don't know, maybe an A100 or T4, it depends on your choice. And you know, the, the cost of the machine will be uh, pretty different. Okay. so. Uh, this machine does come with um, Anaconda, so we can just do Conda in it. To initialize the uh, Anaconda on this machine, just give it a few minutes. Okay, and it says it's done, so let's connect again. Okay, and you can see that the uh, Conda environment has successfully been initiated. Uh, let's check the environments. Okay, it does come with C PyTorch, and you can also definitely create your uh, own environment. So let's just go activate PyTorch. Okay, so now basically all the uh, environments on this instance is set. Um, next up, let's look at how to uh, transfer files between your local computer and this uh, AWS instance. Now for demonstrating purposes, let's create a folder. Okay, so let's create a new file called um, test.txt. Okay, uh, let's type something random here, hello, saving it. Okay, so, how do we copy this file on our AWS uh, instance back to our local computer? The command we want to use is SCP. Okay, so if we take a look. Um, by the way, all the commands uh, for connecting to um, the instance and um, SCP and uh, other things are all in this notebook. So if you forget, you can just Take a look at this notebook. Okay, so 
here let's first um try to download this file from the instance to our local uh, to our local computer okay so you want to do this uh from your local computer so let's create a new terminal and uh all right oh there's already a first Okay, so you want to um, type this command on your local terminal. And um, essentially this key is the, uh, is the, the key that you pasted, uh, that you downloaded from AWS. So you just type in the path to your key. And um, this middle part is your, um, your credentials for your uh, AWS instance, which you can basically just uh, copy paste from here. So this entire thing will be, uh, you can also just, oh, this is an internal IP. So just copy from the web, uh, from the AWS web page. And then after this, you want to type the path to uh to the file that you want on your instance and then finally uh to your to a local path that you want okay let's take a look and you can see that this file is actually uh downloaded from the uh, AWS machine so say that you've coded something on your local computer and you want to run it on your instance. The uh, procedure is fairly similar. Uh, let's first change this file, right? Uh, hello world. Okay. Now say that you want to change, uh, you want to transfer this modify file back to the, your AWS instance, uh, what you, what you want to do is basically uh, use the same command, but then you want to uh, reverse the order uh, of the source and the destination. So here we just put test.txt um, before the AWS destination, and then basically you're all set. All right, let's go back to our uh, AWS machine and see if it has successfully been changed. And you can see that this is now the change content from your local computer. And this is the basic procedure uh, from uh, to use, uh, to transfer files between your local computer and the AWS instance. But then you, send, you can also use like uh, other tools to help you do this, but SCP is the most basic command that you should know of how to transfer files between a SSH remote and your local computer. All right, next up, let's take a look at how to uh, create a Jupyter notebook uh, on your AWS instance and then connect to it on your uh, local computer. So if we take a look here, uh, we can just use this command on your AWS instance. Give it a few seconds. Okay, now the servers um, started on the uh, AWS instance. And we want to connect to it from our local machine. And what we want is to use this command. Just do it on our local uh, computer. And then here the remote user is essentially same as this. Then we replace the key with the actual key path um, of the SSH 
key. All right. Now we should be able to connect to uh, the notebook from here. Okay, so here it does prompt you for a password or token, which you can copy paste uh, from your um, AWS terminal. Here you have your token. If you just copy this. Okay. And here uh, we are in our AWS machine. You can just normally create your own notebook. Okay, and uh, do some stuff, I guess. Forge doc this. Well, it's taking a while to import Torch somehow. Anyways, um, so here you can normally use your uh, your Jupyter Notebook, okay? And you can see that uh, you can normally use the GPU in this environment. Okay, now the last thing I wanna show you is to how to connect to your instance uh, using VS Code. Because this is, uh, Jupyter Notebook is, well, it's useful, but then there are some situations where you don't want to use a Jupyter notebook, but to use um, Python scripts directly. And then uh, personally, I don't really like this uh, browser Jupyter notebook thingy. So um, let's see how to connect to it using uh, VS Code. Okay, so the first thing you want to do, of course, is to uh, install a remote SSH uh, extension if you don't already have it. And then if you go to Remote Explorer, you can just click this Add button, and then you copy paste this command, this connect command from um, the AWS web page. Okay, if you refresh, you can see it here. Now notice that we also need to change uh, the identity file path because it won't find it in whatever directory that is. Okay, so you need to change this identity file path to the actual path uh, of the identity file. Um, here, it's under the .ssh folder, so um, changing it to that. Okay, close it. Now we just connect to this instance. Okay, so here we have successfully connected to it, uh, to the instance using VS Code. And you can normally uh, open a folder here and uh, do all sorts of things. You can also just use, uh, you know, Jupyter Notebooks or uh, use your own Python scripts. Everything is functional. Uh, and uh, that's it for our AWS tutorial from starting an instance, um, transferring files, uh, using a Jupyter Notebook, and to connect to it using VS Code. Thank you all for watching.